So we'll discuss about that uh, those things at the end of this session. Students will be able to learn the following: history taking, examination, investigation in detail of the oral cavity, investigations. So we'll have a brief investigation at the end of this session because so we'll have a final what is called a final conclusion about the uh, clinical uh, clinical and final uh, diagnosis. Uh, so we'll go about one by one. We we'll start with the examination of oral cavity. We'll just briefly tell what exactly oral cavity means. Uh, you know, you know oral cavity grossly, but if somebody asks what is oral cavity, you should be able to define it. What it contains, where exactly it starts, where exactly oral cavity ends. So, as a clinician, you should be able to define. As a medical graduate, medical student, also you should be able to define it. So, what is it? It is a wide area which includes lips, vestibule, gums, teeth, cheeks, tongue, palate, and floor of the mouth. Vestibule is a small outer portion bounded externally by lips and cheeks. Internally by teeth and gums. Vestibule is outside of the teeth, inside of the uh, within the lip. So out from cheek to here, front it comes. It's a very clear, uh, clear space there uh, from posterior to anterior. That is part is called as vestibule. And then teeth comes. Then formal uh, oral cavity comes. There we got tongue, cheek, uh, means buccal mucosa, and floor of the mouth. And above palate, soft palate, all those things. So that is of exactly demarcated vestibule and oral cavity proper. Both are divided by uh, rows of teeth on upper jaw and lower jaw. Both parotid duct opens into the cheek opposite the crown of the upper second molar tooth. Uh, that is called a stenson duct. All of you know that. Numerous mucous glands that are situated in the submucous of the lips and cheeks open into the vestibule. So, secretes in fluid so that keep the, the lip um, wet inside, inner lip is wet actually, keep the lip wet, wet. So, what history you will take in relation to the any oral cavity, whatever the disease, what, how they all present with history. So, name of course, age is important in cleft palate and cleft lip seen in newborns. Tongue tie is seen in infants. I'll show the photo. Then you'll have the idea what exactly it meant by tongue tie. Mucosids can occur at any age group. Oral cancers occur usually in middle age and later age group, which is very common. It is very very common in the oral cancer. Carcinoma oral cavity is more common in males. Occupation: Agriculturists who are constantly exposed to sunlight are more prone to develop carcinoma lip. Otherwise, it's called as country man's lip. Whereas commercial carcinoma occurs in the lower lip, whereas in upper lip, do can it do can occur in the upper lip also. In upper lip, minor salivary gland tumor is much more uh, common. Squamosal carcinoma is very common in this because probably they expose to the sunlight. So, this is called the country man's lip or agriculture's lip in the lower lip. But uh, by principle, carcinoma lip has got a always better prognosis. Alam, we compare it to tongue, floor of the mouth, uh, then buccal mucosa, other area, palate. Uh, lip has got uh, very good prognosis. By recovery is very good, prognosis is very good. Whereas the tongue and floor of the mouth malignant cancers have got poor prognosis. So that is called countryman's uh, lip address Australian Caucasian commonly developed lip cancers. But these are very less common in African blacks actually and Negroes. And what are the chief complaint? I already told in earlier sessions, chief complaint uh, means what is the first complaint? Uh, they will say that you should be first, should be mentioned first, then duration, like pain, duration, ulcer, duration. Uh, swelling duration, difficulty in opening the mouth duration, dysphagia duration, uh, halitosis duration, like that. So, silent only, not every history comes in the chief complaint. Chief complaint is specific uh, history relevant, you will be mentioned initially, so that you will have the uh, bulk of the history actually. Then you will detail it in history of present illness. So, history of ulcer in, and in the mouth and duration is a very commonest presentation is ulcer in the oral cavity. Whereas in the neck, I earlier told swelling is the commonest presentation. History of pain, then of course pain, pain may be there, may not be there, and duration. Initially it is painless, then becomes painful, many malignancies and uh, benign ulcers, after ulcers are very, very painful to begin with, like that. So pain is important. Difficulty in opening the mouth because once inflammation, either inflammatory condition or infiltration due to malignancy, pterygoid muscle and other uh, oral cavity muscles, muscles of mastication get infiltrated, spasm occurs. They won't be able to open the mouth. So that is uh, difficult in opening the mouth. Dif um, swelling in the mouth, I said already swelling. Swelling in the neck because once oral cancer develops, oral infection develops, it that may spread into the neck lymph node. So then they will develop that uh, swelling. They will say ulcer is there since uh, six months, then swelling since three months. 
then we'll say the malignant started in the oral cavity then it has gone to the neck lymph node now we go to the history of present illness after chief complaint swelling history of swelling mucous cyst of the lip or cheek present as painless swelling of long duration or those benign condition may present as a cyst duration progress presence of pain should be asked for carcinoma often can present as swelling of short duration many times carcinoma present as ulcer sometimes as a proliferative lesion sometimes proliferative lesion sometimes in the special in the tongue may be a indurated entity and uh, minor salivary gland tumors is common in the palate where they present as a swelling rather than ulcer eventually ulcer may form over the summit so in this situation swelling is a presentation otherwise by and large ulcer is a also a or more common presentation in oral malignancies or in oral uh, diseases lip cancer is slowly progressive and so may be of long, long duration whereas carcinoma cheek and tongue is rapidly progressive and is of short duration already told lip has got a better prognosis tongue flora the mouth and then buccal mucosa has got uh, not good prognosis compared to the carcinoma lip minor cellular gland tumor in palate and lip present as a swelling i already to presentation minor cellular gland tumor is usually swelling not ulcer so ulcer next very important history is ulcer is very common uh, many oral lesion present as ulcer so ulcer is the oral cavity is common it can be aphthous ulcer syphilitic ulcer traumatic ulcer tuberculous ulcer malignant ulcer so what we are mostly worried is malignant ulcer because all other things uh, can be treated by conservatively or may resolve on its own as like tuberculous ulcer may require drug therapy and definitely heals on its own also with the proper drug therapy uh, once you finish the course there is malignant ulcer needs a special attention a special protocol to treat uh, to get the proper outcome so after ulcer is painful malignant ulcer is painless to begin with but become painful once it infiltrate or get infected so anywhere malignancy is initially pain painless and becomes painful with certain exceptions uh, it is usually painless to begin with origin of ulcer duration progress anywhere ulcer i have discussed earlier uh, topics actually that are detailed properly how to describe about ulcer as far as history is considered so all those things in detail you have to ask see the carcinoma cheek here it is commonest site of oral cancers in the indian subcontinent this oral cancer is very very common in indian subcontinent um, in, not only india indian subcontinent it comes everything pakistan bangladesh all those things carcinoma tongue involving extensively there is ankyloglossia inability to protrude the tongue tongue out see that the person can't it's so so widely involved tongue tongue cancer you can see the inverted edge also lesion causes the midline it causes the midline always especially tongue lesion palate lesion lip lesion whether it causes the midline or not is very important so if it is so out ask the patient in such a patient where it starts also we have to ask where it starts here and then goes like this towards this side then you know this is the, this margin the tongue margin this uh, malignant ulcer is started then it is spreading across across and going across this so that that, that adversely related to the staging and outcome such lesion spread to the bilateral cervical lymph node once it crosses the midline it spreads to both lymph nodes that is also important again i quite say poor prognosis again see the carcinoma angle of the lip in the commissure see that it is extending to the buccal mucosa see the carcinoma palate here entire palate is involved it is again crossing the midline see the both side it is there in the midline so history of once you have discussed about the swelling and ulcer it is a very common presentation and then pain of course is again very very important site of pain radiation referred pain severity of pain pain over the adjacent mandible or maxilla jaw whether pain restricted mouth opening or swallowing should be asked for because they can't open the uh, mouth because of the pain because of the